for staying with us. So um, it's not news that the NSAS protest is ongoing and we have a lot of people on the street and it's looking like it's an unending transaction. So um, quickly, um, Isti and um, NASA, let me, take, let me hear your take first before I even try to bring in our, our guest. What do you think um, is happening in terms of the impact of the diasporans with the current realities of the NSAS protest? Has it really, really brought voice to this? Um, I would say they have, basically, because we see them tweeting, we see them talking about it, we see them going out into the streets to actually lend their voices and also um, assist those of us that are back home. Those of um, the, um, uh, the Nigerians in diaspora are also, you know, um, finding one way or the other to, you know, pass the message across, even donate in one way or the other to the cause. So I, I would say they are totally lending their voices to this cause. Absolutely. So, let me get so for me, it's just clear that, you know what, we're, we're all Nigerians, whether we're in Nigeria or outside Nigeria, we Absolutely. are whatever affects us here affects them. That's the truth. They still have family mm -hmm. members. You may be out the country, but you have family members that remain here. So you or they might still come back to it. Plus the frustration. Exactly. So the frustrations are not only nigeria alone it's global now everybody's feeling the pain because it affects someone that you know like i mentioned earlier so you can't remove yourself from the situation and the good thing is it's lending credibility to this like every even the artist i saw with kids somewhere he was leading a process I'm like fantastic doesn't matter if you're present locally you can lend your voice and it just shows the government that we're not playing we're serious so what seemed yeah, like a mind has a different turn as we have seen with the NSAS protests, with celebrities, Nigerians, you know, in the diaspora, ensuring that their voices are heard loud. And they've not only said, I mean, put their voices to this protest, they also invested, money, you know, financing and sponsoring, you know, ensuring that the protesters do not go to bed hungry, that the protesters are well fed and the protesters are taken care of, you know, mm -hmm. and... I'm looking at this because they seem determined to keep the fire burning to ensure that this protest stays on until their demands are met. Yes. Now, Dr. Mbabe Olufumlaya is a medical doctor based in the UK, and he's been on the front burner. Actually, when you go on Twitter, he's very visible on Twitter, ensuring that the conversations are going. We call him our favorite n -stars doctor on Twitter, <laughs> and he's joined the conversation this evening via Zoom. So in case you want to join this conversation, please let us hear what you have to say. You can tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waste Africa One with the hashtag Waste, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Olufumilaya. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you for, for having me. All right, so, I mean, it's an interesting conversation. You people have grounded us, so we are not in the studio at all because the protest is real. You know, what seemed like a joke, it seemed like a minor agitation. Yes. You know, all of a sudden, it, I mean, we had a conversation on Friday asking ourselves that are the, are the young people truly, are they, have, have we been awakened, you know? And I think we, at the time we're rounding up that conversation, we, we concluded that, yes, we are truly awake. You know, so I wanted to, you know, hear from the people in the diaspora because a lot is going on. You know, you are on the forefront of, you know, pushing a lot of um, conversations, driving it, ensuring that the international communities are hearing what we are saying, you know, about the, the NSAS movement and all of that. So tell us the impact that you have made and the impact that everyone in the diaspora has made so far in ensuring that this fire for the NSAS protest is, is ongoing. Okay, so in terms of impact, um, the Nigerians in diaspora, quite a lot of us have not been silent on the matter. Um, and, and the reasons are quite, are quite um, simple. Um, we have family in Nigeria, we have friends in Nigeria. If, if the country completely um, breaks down or if, if police continues to do what they do, Someday it could be someone you know, it could be a friend, it could be a family. So if young people decide that enough is enough, I mean, the minimum we can do is to keep encouraging them, is to keep supporting them, is to let them know that they are not alone and we are with them in this. And we will do everything that we can. There's been um, protests all over the world by Nigerians. Last time I tried to count almost 20 countries from France to 
Germany to UK to Ireland to I mean it's all over the place to America to, I mean it's all over the place so and people forget that the world is now a global village exactly. so sometimes I can't even get news before you do because it's Twitter everybody brings information there so we know what's going on we can monitor what's going on we can contribute to 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 the to the process to the protests to to whatever decisions are being made um so i'm happy about the protests i don't have any problems with them continuing as long as young people are dissatisfied then the protests will continue it's it's as simple as that Okay, doctor, in Nigeria currently, we have individuals coming together saying that we, it is all of us. It is not just one person coming to you know, lend their voices to say, hey, we are holding our grounds. We are not letting go. So do you think that we have like a collective body like that um, in diaspora or we have a leader who is leading those in diaspora to, you know, to have the riot or the, sorry, the protest, sorry, not riot. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the correction, not riots and never mm -hmm. riots. The yes. only people who have come to the protest grounds or riots are government agents, are police and government hired thugs. Protesters mm -hmm. have been beautifully peaceful and which is remarkable. Um, which just shows that this current young generation, they are not a generation of hoodlums, they are not a generation of thugs. They are people who are quite clear on what they want and they will not back down until they get it. Now, to your question, the beauty of this protest is that it's a leaderless protest and it will remain so. It's completely decentralized, it's decentralized in Nigeria, and it's the same all in, 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 all, over in the world. all over the world. So I've not seen anywhere that there's any sort of leader. You may have people who might be some sort of organizers in, in carrying out one thing or in getting something else done, but in terms of a leader, both within Nigeria and outside Nigeria, I'm not aware of any. It's a volunteer-led protest where people volunteer their services, their money, their time, their energy, their skills towards the same goal and oh. police brutality. It should not be so difficult to do. That's right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, no, I, I was sorry, I'm interrupting you. I don't know if you finished what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was just saying that, it, I mean, it's a simple request. Just don't kill us. We're not mm -hmm. telling you to build roads. We're not telling you to build schools. We will someday come to that. But for now, all we're saying is just, just stop killing us. leave us alone. Yes, it's as simple as that. And reform the police. Exactly. That's fantastic. I, you know, I like what you're saying. And but my my point, my question or what I've been wondering about is so I understand this protest. I understand the agitations is a fallout of, you know, it's like the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. We're tired. Stop killing us. But then it's a larger problem. And then this is just for me, NSAS is symbolic. It's just, you know, uh, this is us now finding our voice and saying, you know, we're, we're actually quite frustrated in terms of being leaderless. So far, it works for the protest, but there has to come a time, to my mind, where there has to be some sort of leader or representative that goes to the table yeah. to then have that conversation about what it is that we want. Right now, we're asking for things. Nobody, we say we don't, we're just, we're just hearing words and no action. But yeah. the truth is, if you don't go to the table, yeah. you're still going to just keep hearing words because then you're not going to really see what's been done. So you have to be a part of it. Now the entire population can't be part of that table. So there's got to be a selection. And I don't know how that's going to work. But, you know, I, in terms of leaderlessness, it can't be forever for us to actually get results. Well, I can, I can give you an idea of something that has been talked about, okay. which I think will work fantastically. So um, one of the demands um, in, in the 545, five, which is quite popular, no, one of the demands is, is, is that government must set up judicial panels of inquiry. Now, government has agreed to that. Each state has now been mandated to set up a judicial panel of inquiry. Now, the beautiful thing about that is the fact that, again, that works perfectly for a leaderless protest because that then means that each state, the young people in that state can have some sort of arrangement to send some representatives to that panel. 
-hmm. while others continue the agitations or protests or whatever in the background. Okay. Now, the people that go to the panel, they are not leaders. They are just messengers mm. to go tell the panel what the people in that state want. You understand? Okay. And from what I understand, the majority of people want that panel to be televised and it should be live. Something yeah. similar to what you have with Oputa panel and the Sovereign National Conference. And, and, and there's a reason for it. So that if the representatives go there and they start talking nonsense, Out of, you exactly. know already it's a waste of time. You exactly. understand? And that, for me, is a brilliant suggestion. They're already talking okay. about it in Lagos, how they will come up with something. Another thing I think the young people are going to resist seriously is for governors to just sit down in their offices and draw up some ridiculous names of people mm -hmm. and then say that those are the representatives that will go to that kind of meeting. It's not okay, It won't happen. happen. <laughs> yeah, it won't happen. I've seen one funny list drawn by Lagos. Almost everybody on that list is over 40 years old or 45 years old. That's ridiculous. <laughs> you understand? You can't pick the same people who have no idea what is going exactly. on, who have no plan and whatsoever. To hijack for their own interests. Exactly. You just hijack it for the purpose of um, playing to the games. gallery or, or taking pictures. Like or saying, so, because yesterday we were having a conversation. I remember Uti saying something about, uh, in the light of, okay, the fact that it, the person is the, does not give an automatic qualification that that person can actually solve so the problems. Uh, on how who we selected. But I wanted to ask you this question because yeah. you are in, far away in the UK, miles away from, from Nigeria, and now the protest is ongoing, right? The streets are being blocked. And um, currently now, we can't even leave our houses because of the agitations on the yeah. street and everybody is, you know, everybody's... You know, for now, the citizens understand what is going on. We understand that, yes, this fight is actually for us. Don't you think we have to get to a, a middle point where we say, you know what, let us take a breather and let us go to the negotiating tables, you know, so to talk to these people. Because now, don't you see um, the Nigerian people that we are even fighting for in the first place, that the young people are fighting for in the first place, getting tired of this, you know, that they cannot go about their businesses, especially mm -hmm. knowing the economy of Nigeria. So somebody mm -hmm. will look at you that you you're collecting your pounds you're not you're not suffering what we're suffering right so what would you say you know about that <laughs> okay so the first thing i'll say is um to a large extent a, a few things to consider so people have endured this government and its incompetence for five years these mm. protests have been for 10 days and you're let's, be serious, let's be serious here <laughs> um universities have been closed for how long six months so mm -hmm. what are we really talking about? A lot of businesses were closed because of COVID. So what are we really talking about? The government, what have they given you in terms of any palliatives or anything? Palliatives. People are literally eating every day on these protest grounds. Better food than what the government is giving them. Funded mm -hmm. fully by young people themselves. So what, 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 what are we really discussing? And, and by the way, by the way, if, if somebody says that, oh, they think the, the economy is crashing or something. Well, the economy was crashing before all of this. And they created a situation that made this possible. You mm -hmm. made people poor. You made people unemployed. You took people out of schools. What did you think was going to happen to them? So what, what do you think? think, what do you think is the best way to hold the government accountable for mm. their actions how do how do we hold them accountable yes so the first thing is government needs to show seriousness i think we need to also understand here that the onus on stopping the protest is not on people it's on government the the reason people went out in the first place was because government was messing up it was not the case that these people um just decided to come up with a beautiful idea to have fun on the streets no it's on government to end the protest. There are simple ways. I keep saying it. It's not hard. There is no reason why that IG still has his job. There oh, is no Dr. reason. Sorry? Can I, can, I, can I cut you a little bit to just jump in here? Yes. What you are talking about is a simple thing. Don't you think that the government is afraid that if they grant us this request, 
that yeah. because we have done this, it will give us the liver. You know, the next time we we'll are bigger. <laughs> Don't you think that is that fear? And that's why it seems like something yeah, that to so. you is simple, it's not simple to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that Sorry, before you answer that question, Uwa, yeah. don't you think that's the more reason why we should persist? If the government is afraid that we're going to then uh, be stronger and then be, ask for more demands, then it means they're not ready to really do their jobs. Because that's why that's why we're here. We're supposed to make demands of the government. So please, uh, Dr. Lufumlayo. <laughs> yes, now. So I was going to say that that means we agree at least on the fact that the government can do these things, but they are simply choosing not to. Yeah, so if, if that premise is correct, then that is enough motivation for people to right. remain on the street. That's all the motivation they need. So, so do you think that the vice president's um, um, speech, or should I call it a speech, when he tweeted that he is sorry, that we know that we, we, are, we are tired, that we are, we, that we are suffering, that they would do their best to make things right in his words. Now, I can get the words correctly yeah, now, but yeah. the bottom line is that he apologized to Nigeria. Do you think that apology to Nigerians, both home and abroad, do you think is valid? No, it's not. And I'll tell you why. These people were elected, yeah? When they were trying to get themselves elected, they did not sit down in their offices to send out tweets. They went to the 36 states, they engaged people directly. I've been hearing all sorts of bullshit how they cannot talk to everybody. Well, they talked to everybody in 2015 and in 2019. They can do it again. And by the way, um, if again, government needs to show some seriousness here. There's no reason why the idea of police still has his job. He has lost control of the police. You understand? Even during this protest, police has killed maybe almost 20 people. There are states where Lagos, Ogun, no, not Ogun, Lagos or your Edo states, there's no reason why those commissioners of police are still there. So if government wants the young people to see them as taking this matter seriously, one simple step, which you would think is common sense, is to say the IG needs to go, those commissioners need to go, the new people coming in only have one mandate. Hmm to go after all the killer police officers, yeah? Mm -hmm. Prosecute yeah. them publicly and then mm -hmm. commit to long-standing reforms. I am telling you, you do that tonight. By tomorrow morning, young That's people will start having conversations about leaving the streets. This is mm. not rocket science. So it's all you about tell us, you want to tell no us, words. Yeah, see, 2015, sorry, 2016, they said, they will, they will disband SARS. 2017, they will reform SARS. 2018, they will, they will remodel SARS. 2019, they will rebrand SARS. How many times are you going to talk about these things? 2020, they changed, they changed uh, SARS to SWAT. They disguised it. <laughs> they aren't even yeah, disguised it completely to SWAT. How long so, are we going to do this? That's hmm. I, I have a question, right? Hold on a minute. We'll go on a short break. Yeah, let's quickly go on a quick break. Let's go and pay our bills. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Okay.